Uh, I would like to thank the Idaho Commission on Hispanic Affairs for providing me with the opportunity to speak to you. And I would like to thank you for taking the time to listen. My name is Rafael Vasquez. Yo soy mestizo. Mi padre es Charro Tapatío del Estado de Jalisco y mi madre es Alacrán Tepehuan de la Sierra de Durango. I am also Lieutenant Colonel of the United States Army, uh, but I take great pride in my name, Rafael. It's not an easy name to pronounce. Adults tried to anglicize my name. My parents made sure that I knew that it was pronounced Rafael. It, it wasn't for anything other than the fact that they understood how important it was and I stood for something. I knew what I was standing for. My parents knew exactly who they were. My father came to this country at the age of 16. He was part of the Bracero program. In the late 19, or in the early 1940s, actually, around World War II, there was a shortage of manual labor. So the U.S. and Mexico came into an agreement to uh, make up that shortage in manual labor. So brazos, arms in Spanish, is uh, the term that was used, and it was used to identify braceros. So my father came to this country, he lied, he was not 18, he was only 16 years old, but he was chasing a dream, a dream of the North. And that's how he ended up here. My mother, on the other hand, had a different route. So she is from Durango, a very mountainous region. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it's similar to Colorado and the Rocky Mountains, but it's called La Sierra Madre in Durango. So her family migrated from Durango to the northern states of Baja California and Sonora, and eventually she ended up in Los Angeles, California. You know, to this day, when things get tough and I want to complain, my mother says to me, uh, if I was able to walk barefoot across the mountain passes of La Sierra Madre, this is nothing. You'll be fine. So my mom and dad met in Los Angeles. They married, and they made a life for us in L.A., and then eventually we moved to Arizona. Neither my mother or father have a formal education. To this day, my father has a very, very small elementary education, maybe sixth grade. We still don't know about my mother. She has never disclosed it to us. To this day, when my mind signs her signature, it's very, very slow. She thinks about it. Without a formal education, I knew at a very young age that my parents were incredibly astute. In Arizona, my parents worked in El Desaje. For many years, I, I didn't know what that word meant. I knew that it was something that required you to get up really early in the morning before dawn and you know, fight through the bitter hot sun, sometimes the bitter cold. Um, and at the end of it, you produced lettuce. Most of the lettuce you see in the grocery stores, iceberg lettuce, is cultivated in a region of the Southwest it's called the, the lettuce belt. It's essentially the Central Valley of California and Arizona. And that's what my parents did. The saige, it means thinning. You see, the lettuce, as it matures, needs about 12 inches on each side. No matter how technologically advanced we've gotten, there are no agricultural machines that can precisely thin two plants to 12 inches so they can reach full maturation. So that's my, what my parents did. It's incredibly hard work. They used to tell us growing up that our only job was to get A's. That was it. Their job was el desaje, and my job was to get A's. Every time I tried to cut corners, I would remember how hard they had to work. So that, and also knowing the veiled threat of a chancla being thrown in my general direction if I got a B, kept me straight. My parents raised me to be humble. Uh, not full of boast, but it's a, I think it's important for you to know who I am professionally so you understand where education can take you. This is my path, one path, but it is the outcome of education. So like I said, I'm a lieutenant colonel in the United States Army. Uh, that means that I have been promoted thus far within two ranks of becoming a general officer. And I think about that. When I think about that 16-year-old boy and that 12-year-old girl making their way up to the United States. So what that really means is that I've been promoted the equivalent of 14 times over 26 years. My branch or career field, my job in essence, is to be a military intelligence officer, 
but also served as an infantryman, a soldier, a sergeant uh, in the 75th Ranger Regiment and in the 82nd Airborne Divisions. I've also been a battalion operation officers, uh, officer. That means that I've been in charge of all the training for every single signals intelligence analyst and signals intelligence linguist in the Army. I've been trusted with some of the nation's most sensitive secrets and sensitive information. I am an airborne ranger, I'm a jump master, and I've graduated, like I said, from the premier leadership's course in the U.S. Army. That's what this is right here, a ranger tab. Since graduating from high school, I left the lettuce fields of Summerton, Arizona and have deployed and commanded multiple special operations uh, missions in Iraq and Afghanistan, but also I've been able to visit and work in places like Canada, England, France, Portugal, Germany, Switzerland, and multiple countries in South America and the Caribbean. Finally, I am a recipient of our nation's fourth highest military decoration for valor, the Bronze Star Medal with V device. And I've also been awarded the Purple Heart. Dreaming the impossible is a sensibility that I inherited from my father. He had the audacity to dream, to come to this country and make a better place for himself and for us is incredible. And it takes audacity. That's what you need. My mother, on the other hand, knew that dreams were not enough. You need the hard work. You need to dedicate yourself. You need to put your nose down and work as hard as you can to make those dreams a reality. Nothing is impossible if you put in the work. Because of my parents' background, however, we didn't have a culture of ACTs or SATs or college prep. So we knew we had to work hard. I knew I could only get A's, but I didn't know what to do then. At some point, I knew that I was gonna graduate with an incredible grade point average without a plan of what to do. It was then when I met Staff Sergeant Manuel Sanchez. So Manuel Sanchez was my army recruiter. He looked like me, sounded like me, dressed professionally, and sat me down and said, okay, so you got good grades, what are you gonna do next? He knew that uh, my parents at that time had two older siblings in college. And he knew that because of their work in El Desaije, they weren't going to have the economic background, the financial support for me to go to school. So he gave me a way to not only go to college, but to serve my country, to give back. And as a consequence of that interaction, I have a bachelor's degree in psychology from Arizona State University, and I have a master's in military strategic studies from the University of the Marine Corps. In one generation, Education transported my family from the lettuce fields of California and Arizona to the front of a 300 person battalion with an area of operation that spans across seven states. An incredibly diverse organization. I'm a first generation Mexican American. My parents came, like I've told you, as migrants. My senior enlisted advisor was born and raised in Philadelphia. Up until recently, my executive officer was born and raised in Russia. That 16-year-old boy and that 12-year-old girl could have never dreamt that their son would be in charge of a, such a diverse organization. It is education that did that. I was able to educate myself in my opportunities and then further my education through study, hard work. I challenge you to educate yourself about all the opportunities available to you and dedicate yourself to a habit of lifelong learning. When I see your generation, I see a generation that is up to surpass any challenge. Your generation is a resilient generation. It's a generation that continues the legacy of our migrants. You have the most challenges of any generation. I didn't grow up in an atmosphere where I had to learn active shooter drills. You have and you're still here. I didn't grow up in an era of tumult and civil unrest. You have. I am not wearing a mask right now, but I guarantee you once this video is over, I will have to put on a mask because we are in a, in a pandemic and that is the life you're living. You are resilient. You matter. 
And the fact that you generation has taken the opportunity to exercise your constitutional right to assembly means you're an engaged generation. And that may, gives me hope for the future. You have every right to feel a bit overwhelmed right now, but you can always control two things, your attitude and your effort. Find a silver lining in things. Dream big. Nothing is impossible. Dream big and work hard. Imagine your future. Educate yourself. Put in the hard work and make your dream whatever your dream is. And nobody gets to tell you what your dream is. Make that dream a reality. Once again, thank you for listening to what I have to say. Siempre adelante.